This is Adrian in Texas. Hey, Adrian, you're on the air here with Truth Wanted. How's it going tonight? Hi, Dan. It's going good. Cool. Thank you for taking my call. Absolutely. What did you want to talk about um, with us? Yes. Uh, first, I just wanted to uh, say that um, before you talk about Jesus, you would have to first prove that there's a God. And uh, and that's what I want to do now. Before we talk about so, Jesus, we first have to prove, well, not, I don't think we have to, if we're talking about a historical Jesus, right? We can talk about a historical Jesus without, or is that not what you mean? Right. Yeah, I was meaning the, the Jesus that everybody thinks is God. Okay. Jesus as son of God. Before we can talk about Jesus as son of God, we have to talk about God is kind of your conjecture. Yes, sir. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Go sure. for it. Uh, explain a little bit more. Okay. I believe in a creator God mm -hmm. because of the uh, evidence that was left behind. Like the, uh, uh, let's see, the moon and DNA and uh, the distance from the sun that the earth is and the tilt of the earth and the tectonic plates and the magnetic field and the, uh, what is the ozone layer. Okay. That's like five or six different things there. <laughs> cool. Yeah, there, cool. there's a lot of... of uh, there's a lot of things that uh, even the experts will tell you that you know, we're lucky to have these things and that um, cause, they use the words like cosmic lottery and uh, luck and, uh, you know, uh, you know they, they just say things like that about these things. And uh, I think that is evidence for that points to a designer, especially when some of them even say that it looks to be designed and they don't know why. Mm. Interesting. I want to let uh, Mr. Bear kind of take control of this conversation just to give him some time to talk and, and, and you know, um, join in here. And then I'll, I'll kind of trail behind. So, uh, Mr. Bear, do you have any response to any of this right here? Yeah, sure. Look, this is this is a really interesting uh, view, viewpoint in terms of how everything appears to be quite perfect, is what you're saying, Adrian, in terms of everything, everything, um, everything suits life. In other words, yes, sir. That's that is what the uh, experts are saying. Mm. It's funny. It's when when we go outside. Do you um, what do you feel about the solar system in general, in terms of the planets and and so on? How do you feel about those? Why they're there and what what they're for, or if they're there at all? Why the rest of the why everything else is made? Or yeah. Do do you, do you feel? That, um, do you agree that there is Mars and Saturn and Jupiter and so on? Yes. Yes, sir. Why do you, Why do you feel that they they exist? Why Why is Jupiter there, for example? You can't. We, we can't really get within one hundred thousand kilometers of Jupiter, for example, without dying. What What do you, Why do you think it's there? I'm 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 generally curious. Uh, like uh, what the uh, experts are saying is that it protects us from asteroid strikes and kind of uh, like a yeah. vacuum cleaner, cosmic vacuum cleaner, and it, and it uh, kind of uh, sucks in the uh, the asteroids that are that would be heading towards us if they didn't hit um, Jupiter, like uh, the yeah. one that they saw back in the nineties. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. Do you feel the planets have a purpose? Is that what you're yeah. saying? They have a purpose to protect Earth. Uh, this one does, and Jupiter does for sure. Yeah. And what, what about Mars? Could also uh, show us how um, how lucky we are because there's the other ones. Most of them are in the uh, habitable zone, hmm. Goldilocks zone. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny that I'm talking to a bear about Goldilocks, but there you go. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so, uh, it was meant to be. Uh, yeah, the Goldilocks zone. Uh, yeah, yeah. The uh, Mars and and uh, Mercury and Venus are also in that zone, but they don't have 
you know, the things that we have, mm. it kind of shows us that, that we are, um, in like, like what the experts are saying, lucky. So, and, uh, yeah, if I could chime in here, cause uh, I was just thinking about something the other day. I was looking at a piece of pyrite. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the mineral pyrite, Adrian, um, but uh, yeah, I used to go rock hunting with my dad. And uh, I was looking at a piece of pyrite. And one thing that's really cool about pyrite is that um, if you've ever seen uh, big chunks of it, they can get into these big cubic chunks. And they're really neat looking because it looks like somebody just sliced a knife right on the sides of it and made these giant cubes. Man, but I'm so sorry. I, I'm, not sure, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with pyrite. Yeah, it's, it's P-Y-R-I-T-E. Um, and, uh, if you maybe pull up a picture on Google images, you probably maybe have seen some before. I don't know, but, um, I guess where I'm trying to go with this is, you know, like I look at this pirate and it looks really cool. It looks like somebody, like I said, just slice a knife right through it. But if you know enough about physics and if you know enough about, uh, crystals in general and how crystals actually form and make their structures, you can explain exactly how this piece of pyrite formed the structure that it did and there's nothing supernatural about it there's nothing that needs to be designed about it it's just it, it, it just kind of works out in a mathematical way in so much that it just happens to form in cubes whereas other kinds of minerals don't because they don't have the same kinds of atomic structures that pyrite does <clears throat> um and so that got me thinking because i thought you know if i ever talk to somebody about design i might want to bring this up because i can show you this piece of pyrite and i can show you exactly how it works and and i don't have to have a creator god explanation as to why it is the way that it is. And so as atheists, you know, we tend to extrapolate the same kinds of things when we look at other kinds of data. I mean, you mentioned a lot of stuff, right? The Goldilocks zone, the ozone layer, uh, the magnetic fields and stuff. And I agree with you. Like, it, it's super interesting to see exactly how these systems are working and what they're doing for us. But I can also explain a lot of these things without going into detail on every single one that you mentioned, because you did mention quite a few. We can explain a lot of these things through our scientific observations, and I haven't found a single thing yet, and maybe there are some things where a god is absolutely necessary for an explanation for the things that the way that they are. Um, you know, if, if there is, I'd love to hear it, but, you know, I, I would say that Mr. Bear and I probably haven't seen anything that we couldn't, that we absolutely needed to have a creator god as an explanation for. Would you agree with me, Mr. Bear? Um, I would. Yeah, I, 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 everything seems to be explainable so far. There are things, of course, we don't know and haven't explored or discovered yet, um, which is that God of the Gaps argument where we say, well, well, that's, that's God. But uh, if we look at what we've learned in 100 years, even those things are DNA, etc. It, it's one of those things. It's like a, a never-ending tautology because we discover DNA and people say, "Aha! Well, God had that there already." And and it's one of those things that we'll continue to endeavor. I'd rather continue to endeavor to explore and say, "Well, let's explore and let's see what we can find out," rather than default to saying, "Oh, it, it, it's just God," because that um, it's okay to to have that thought. I'm not going against that, but. Um, I choose to say, well, let's let's endeavor together and explore together and see what we can find out together because who knows what we'll discover in the next hundred years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think to summarize, it's not that God couldn't be an explanation. It's that, well, we don't have enough reasons to assume that that's the best explanation, right? I, I think that would be our take on that. Okay. I think what you're saying, let me see if I got this right, mm -hmm. is that um, right now it looks like there is a God, but in the future that could change. Well, we don't. Well, neither of us uh, believe there is necessarily. I mean, not the Christian God, right? Like we don't have specific beliefs in any Creator God, so we wouldn't say that uh, a Creator God was involved in any of the processes that you mentioned, as far as we know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I think you said that it was um, that it works fine without it, right? Yeah. Well, like, well, certainly, like, we 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 wouldn't be able to explain to you the exact origins of everything that we see, right? I I don't think that neither of us would be knowledgeable on that. But like, as far as a creator God as explanation, right? You can you can imagine a room full of explanations that we can pick from. Um, we just don't go to the creator God one. We don't see a reason to be compelled to a creator God one rather than the other kinds of explanations that we see, right? Okay. Okay. I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, did you I know? Point to did Sorry. You I can point to a really good example there, Adrian. Sorry, oh, go ahead. when you mentioned, go ahead. you know, when you mentioned tectonic plates, how how people, um, ancient societies would have seen volcanoes and 
decided and thought that was a god, for, mm. for example. Yeah. A and it wasn't until we discovered tectonic plates that we had an explanation. That that's one example. Yeah, that's a great example, right? People thought that these big giant forces and they thought, oh, there must be these big gods moving these things or or something making the thunder happen. And we found out there was other explanations for that, right? Yeah, I, that's a good example, I think. Uh, I think actually w uh, most of those things that you're talking about, those ancient uh, megaliths, whatever, those people, they say that the gods moved to those into place. They don't even claim that it was them that mm. did it. Yeah, I think it depends on the particular culture, uh, but I think you had something else you were you were going to say too, um, right? Did we need to interrupt yeah, you I there? I don't. I I can't. I can't. Uh, I don't know if y'all are if y'all believe in God or or if y'all are atheists because most of the things y'all are, are saying are kind of agreeing with me. I think I, I'm not sure. Well, but, uh, Adrian, have you considered maybe you're an atheist? I don't know. I mean, you say that there's a creator God, but like we don't. Like, you know, we see the same things you do, and we don't necessarily see creator gods as the best explanation for them. So we, I think we would both say we're, we're confidently atheists, at least Mr. Bear and I. Yes. Yeah, I'm saying that it's, it's more probable than, than no god. Mm, I see. I'm... Okay. Yeah. If we're, yep. So that's kind of a different thing, right? If we're talking about what's probable and and what's not probable what's more probable less probable stuff like that yeah that's a that's a whole other avenue we can definitely explore at least for a little bit um yeah mr bear you have anything on that uh yeah look that's like you say it opens up a whole new avenue of what's probable and what's not probable it's sort of going down the agnostic path i would say in terms of well look there could be a god um but well, i would i, I would don't say that i'm a, is, a, a agnostic Okay. Um, I mean, I'm oh, an agnostic okay. theist, yeah. and I, I think that everybody's agnostic um, because you know how that that has to do with knowledge, right? And we're just talking about what the evidence shows, and that's what they do in courtrooms every day is make assumptions based off of evidence to get to the what we call the truth, mm -hmm. and and uh, and that's if that's good enough for like murder trials, then it should be good enough for you guys, but. Um, are you saying that that's not that's not good enough? I think that's a a, a fair metaphor to make um, to an extent. I think again, where we disagree is uh, we don't have we don't even have the construct of a god to really you know use that as an explanation for the things that we see. So it's hard for us to make any kind of probabilities or assumptions about those probabilities if we don't even know what the probabilities of a god like that would be in the first place. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes, it would. I think it's just uh, uh, one out of two, and then, and then uh, because it's either God or no God, right? And then, no, I mean, and then it, you just plug in the gaps with the suspects. Those would be the suspects for the trial, and then you just see which one is more probable. And they actually have done uh, the the numbers on uh, nature, and it's not it's not looking good. The numbers are like. 700 tri quintillion uh, to one that that um, there it was nature that did everything. I'm not sure. You know, I could um, I could go out to a field right now, and I could throw a baseball out in that field, and I could pull Mr. Bear aside and say, you know, Mr. Bear, the odds of that ball landing exactly where it is in that field is like a trillion to one. You know, like there's so many places in the field where that ball landed, but it just so happened mm -hmm. to land in that place. And, uh, you know, like if we're using an example like that, you know, it's almost not as impressive, right? Because, yeah, the ball could have landed at any other place, but it just kind of landed there. You know, it doesn't. Well, if we're going to use analogies, shouldn't mm -hmm. they be analogous? Yeah. Because, so, I mean, mm -hmm. that's just one ball falling in a field. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, I'm not saying there's just one thing. I'm saying there's a bunch of things that make it look like we're designed, not just one ball in one field. Mm. Well, mm. do you think is there any evidence of of something that uh, that would show us that we aren't designed? Is that something that we could demonstrate? Yes, yes. Okay, and I think that that's what the scientists are working on right now. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's kind of a general term, you know. There's a lot of scientists. Aren't they trying to figure out how nature works and if and how it how it made everything and and uh, 
I think, think that's in, what they're trying to figure out in, right now. In general, the role of a scientist is to you know observe nature and, and figure out its mechanics. Yeah, I, I'd agree with you there. I'm not sure if it's the goal of a scientist to figure out who created it all. I think maybe if they found evidence of that, you know, they they might publish something like that. But uh, well, they have. That's what I brought up first. Was the uh, Richard Dawkins? He he uh, said himself that DNA looks to be designed, and he doesn't know why. There's uh, other people uh, like Paul Davies. Um, there's Anthony Flew, different uh, mm. physicists and biologists, and from different fields that are experts in their field, and they say that things in their field look to be designed, and they don't know why. And, you know, this is what That's we were, long. this is what I was kind of talk, talking about with Dean mm. in the last call. I think, you know, something like that would definitely give me pause if I was in one of their positions, and I knew as much as they did about that subject. Um, but, you know, the Richard Dawkins one in particular, you know, this actually isn't the first time I've talked about that particular quote with somebody. I think uh, what Dawkins was trying to say there is that it has the illusion of design. Uh, you know, and if we're talking about specifically in his writings, I don't think, you know, Richard Dawkins is still an atheist. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> like, he doesn't believe in any kind of creator God. I think if Richard Dawkins was really convinced that what he saw was designed, you know, maybe that would turn his other way. No, he could be in denial. And that's another explanation. But, you know, these scientists that you're referencing here, a lot of these guys are not believers. They are not as Christians in particular, but you know, they're not mm. even deists either. And, you know, that should sway you in some ways, I think, too. If if these people who are looking at it and saying, yeah, this almost has the appearance of design, but still aren't believers, you know, what does that say about, you know, the things of things that they're observing? No, because then I would be making a uh, argument from authority fallacy. Sure. I just, that would be like me bringing, presenting to you a, uh, a deist uh, scientist mm -hmm. from any... You pick your own, and, you know, and telling you that you should believe in God because this theist and, believes in God. Absolutely. And I know you can see how frustrating that would be. Yes, right? and you're totally right. If I was to say, yeah, the reason why you shouldn't believe in God is because these people don't believe in God, yes. And uh, mm -hmm. I hopefully, I, I, I definitely wasn't my intention. But thank you for pointing that out because that is a valid criticism to have if somebody was to try to make that argument. But I, I do think if, because last time I had this call, somebody was saying, oh, you should believe it because these scientists are saying these things. And, and, um, you know, again, like Terrible. what we're saying right now too, Adrian, is you're also citing these scientists as, you know, I'm citing, like, uh, atheist scientists though, sure. that say that things look well, to be designed. Well, isn't that also an argument of authority right there? Uh, no, cause they're scientists and they're, they're experts in their field and they're not, uh, they're not even, they don't even believe in God but they still think that something looks to be designed. Yeah, okay, I, 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 I can, yeah, I, I think I think we're kind of talking about the same things here. Um, there's, there's another angle to this as well. Yeah, what's that? Uh, um, Adrian, have you heard about the anthropic principle? Anthropic? Yes, or I've heard yeah. of it, but I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I, I, not coming I kind of like, yeah, the, I like the weak, it's called the weak anthropic principle. It's, it was defined by Brandon Carter. He basically just says that the universe's ostensible fine tuning is the result of selection bias, where only in, in a universe capable of eventually supporting life will there be living beings capable of observing and reflecting on the matter. So it's almost like a, it's, it, it's almost like a, well, we, we are here, we do exist. Um, based on this principle, this philosophy that, well, there had to be, otherwise we wouldn't be here talking about it. Does, does that kind of make sense as well, that that viewpoint? It's a hard one to explain. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, I, I don't know what you're getting at, though. Just basically with without, any, without anything behind a design, we exist because um, the universe favoured life from... Via selection, I suppose, is, is another way of saying it. Mm. it, it it's, it's, a, it's a hard one to get your, your head around. It's a hard one for me to get my head around as yeah. well. But if you take mm. God out, and that's a really hard thing to do, to just take God out and just say, okay, we don't know how the universe started. It had started, and it's resulted in life on this planet as far as we know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we, we'd be the only ones to be able to talk about it, right? Like yeah, God wouldn't be able to talk about it with us. You right. know, we we would have to make that conclusion ourselves. 
That's kind yeah, of that's, yeah. That's that's why I brought up the uh, the other uh, planets in the habitable zone because if it was nature that did all that, then we should be seeing the uh, life like us on other planets in the habitable zones. It you know around us at least, and also in the other other places where we're looking. Mm -hmm. But you also have to think of why there's going to be habitable zones in the first place. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I know you mentioned like the, the Jupiter thing earlier. We were talking about how Jupiter protects us from meteors, but it's like, well, why would there be meteors in the first place? You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like we can kind of come up with these explanations yeah. for things, but they're, they're almost ad hoc in a sense. Um, and so you, it's almost, if you look at the whole picture, it doesn't quite, you know, like if, if we are a design, I have to say we are a very strange design, right? Because we seem to work within all the rules of physics and all the rules of like the observable universe that we seem to have found so far. Um, and there doesn't seem to be any breakings of those rules. Are there uh, audit oddities and um, things that are, are really hard to wrap our heads around? Yeah, for sure. But I don't know if I've seen anything that could not be explained yet without some sort of explanation. And maybe there are some things out there, but again, the link to that, going from there to a creator god, I think is, you know, it's a whole other uh, ball game there. If we're to be honest, we, we could be designed better. Yeah, that, that's true too. <laughs> that's true too. Uh, yes, but uh, pointing out the flaws in someone's design only further points to a designer. Does it? Huh. Yes, because uh, nature doesn't make mistakes. Uh, well, I think, well, mistakes, that's kind of a subjective human way of looking at things, right? I mean, uh, what you would call a mistake, what I would call a mistake might be different than what somebody else might call a mistake. So I don't know if that's... I think uh, that's what y'all are pointing out. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. If, if, if I was born with some sort of, you know, deformity... I guess I guess that would be like a, a, a you know a different from the standard norm, right? That's definitely a derivative of that. But just because we have normative ideas of what we think things should be, doesn't necessarily mean that a designer was there in that process. That I mean, that's that's just the values of human judgment. I think there. I don't think there's anything outside of that that's really calling what's good and what's bad, right? Oh well, if you go by the definition of agency and uh yeah it, the uh the universe does have agency it just doesn't make mistakes like a human would because we're we're humans yeah but also i mean if, if we're talking about a perfect creator here as well then he wouldn't make mistakes right yeah but i i don't i don't know how well we could go into like how perfect god is but that would have to be after we've concluded that there is a God. Otherwise, we would be, we might be wasting time. Maybe so. Yeah, I, I, I can see where you can go with that. I do have some other callers that I do want to get to tonight before we wrap up the show. But Adrian, thanks for having a good All conversation right. with us. Um, yeah, now you know what I believe and why. That's right. And we fulfilled the mission <laughs> statement of this show. Um, and uh, it was really good conversation. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for being civil with us. Thanks for um, having that with us. And I'd love to talk to you about it again sometime for sure. Adrian. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm a huge fan. Thanks, right. Adrian. I love it. Thanks, right. and 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 uh, keep watching the show. <laughs> um, yeah. So okay, there we go. We had a conversation about arguments from design and stuff, and uh, you know yeah. what? Nobody yelled at each other. So that's a that's a yeah. <laughs> that's a positive. <laughs> I think maybe, maybe the next one. Mm, maybe the next one for sure. Um, but uh, no, I like again, like you know. That's what I was talking about with Dean, right? Like, these things definitely give me pause, where it's like, huh, that's really interesting. But my brain just doesn't go, yes, the best explanation is a creator god. You know? That's uh, right. I think that's I, where you need to branch out with, and actually speak with biologists, speak with scientists, speak with geologists, speak with, actually see what they're doing and how they're doing it and why they're doing it. And you, you everything expands and opens up and you realize, well, okay, there are people exploring other avenues uh, yeah. going, going forward, yeah. And you can't have it both ways either. You can't say, oh, look at all these things that work in our favor, and then also say, oh, but look at all these things that don't and yeah, work in yeah. our favor in spite, you know, because then you're, it, it's a circular argument there, you know? Yeah, um, it, yeah that's it is right. I'll, 
I live in a country where we have the most poisonous animals in the world. So that wasn't that's that's not a, that's not a very good. Well, what it means is we weren't designed to live in Australia. Clearly, no, so right. you're going right. against God's plan, I think, Mister Bear. Yeah, that's that's right. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. 